Yes, my name is Tony Rivas. I'm a medical oncologist. I'm a professor of medicine at, at the Johnson Comprehensive Cancer Center at UCLA. So uh, I, last week we published an article on a side effect of a new drug for melanoma where we were looking for the mechanism of how secondary cancers were developing. So in, uh, traditionally in, in patients with advanced melanoma, which is uh, the most aggressive type of skin cancer, there, were, uh, there was no effective therapies and nothing had shown improvement in survival. There's around 50% of patients uh, with this disease that have a mutation called BRAF mutation, and an, a new inhibitor has been developed and we've been part of it for the last uh, three years and was approved this year uh, uh, with the generic name of uh, bemurafenib and the commercial name of Zelboraf. Yeah, so uh, this is a, a drug that works in a, on a molecular pathway. So we know exactly why tumors respond. And actually, in more than 50% of the cases, we have major responses in these patients and minor responses in another 30%. So the great majority of patients derive some benefit. Uh, this is not what we were used to in, uh, uh, in patients with metastatic melanoma. Uh, but while doing that, we uh, we recognized that around one-fourth of the patients, secondary non-melanoma skin cancers were appearing. Those secondary skin cancers are squamous cell carcinomas, and uh, compared to melanoma, they're not a big problem uh, because they can just be taken out by surgery. But the mechanism was interesting. So on one side, we had a drug that's very good at blocking uh, an oncogenic uh, mutation in melanoma, the BRAF mutation, and on the other side, we had uh, 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 secondary cancers that were appearing while the melanoma was responding. So we were interested in understanding the mechanism of this. So it had been known that this class of inhibitors, the BRAF inhibitors, uh, do one thing on a cell that has a BRAF mutation, which blocks the cancer pathway. But on a cell that does not have a BRAF mutation, it can do nothing because the mutation is not there, or it can actually paradoxically activate it uh, because of a complicated way that it can, by, uh, it can transactivate uh, the pathway. So we look for that, and we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we took lesions from patients that had developed these squamous cell carcinomas. Uh, we analyzed them uh, molecularly to see if they had BRAF mutations, which they did not, and that's what we would have expected. And then we looked, do they have mutations right above it, which uh, in another protein called RAS. And we found that 60% of the cases, there was those mutations in RAS. So then we wanted to go the next step and test this experimentally by putting this RAS mutation in, in squamous, cell, uh, 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 squamous cells that did not have the RAS mutation. And then we added Zelboraf. And with, by doing that, we, uh, uh, we found what we were looking for, which is that the pathway is transactivated. So there's increased signaling through the pathway. There's this increased uh, gene output that leads to in, uh, uh, increased ability of these cells to proliferate. And then we tested how can we block that. And we can block that by giving a drug that, uh, that blocks immediately downstream called the MAC inhibitor. So the, the uh, clinical relevance of these findings is that now we understand a side effect at the molecular level, which is not that common. And by understanding it uh, at this level, then we can uh, design, uh, rationally design and test in preclinical models and in, and in patients, how can we block this side effect? And the way to block it is by giving uh, a, uh, a class of drugs called MEK inhibitors. So MEK inhibitors block right on the BRAF. And if we give a MEK inhibitor to a melanoma cell that has a BRAF mutation, and we give it together with the BRAF inhibitor, then we're hitting the melanoma twice. We're punching it at BRAF, and then we're punching it again in, uh, at the level of MEC. Uh, but if we think about the cells that do not have the BRAF mutations, that have these other RAS mutations, then the BRAF, mutation, the BRAF drug will transactivate those cells, but the MEC inhibitor will block it. So by uh, developing a combination of a BRAF and a MEC inhibitor, we have uh, we're, uh, we're uh, predicting and we're seeing in the clinic already that we have better responses in the melanoma cells and we're preventing the side effect of the development of these secondary squamous cell carcinomas. Um, it cannot be used now and it's not going to be years away. 
I, I hope it's not going to be years away. We are, it's already been in clinical trials. There's data uh, from two different groups that are pointing to this increased ability to treat melanoma and decrease side effects by giving a BRAF and a MEK inhibitor. So there's two companies that are developing this, uh, uh, these combinations. The limitation for using for uh, patient care right now is that there's no MEK inhibitor that's been approved by the FDA yet, so then we can put them both together. But the clinical trials are quite advanced. Uh, it's expected that this year uh, phase three trials will be uh, will be started and, and uh, uh, hopefully within a year or so we'll have resu definitive results that would convince the FDA that this is a worthwhile way to go through. Yes, they are very expensive drugs because it's taken a lot of effort to develop them and because that's uh, how our system uh, works. Uh, Yearboy first went into patients 11 years ago and uh, I'm actually following a patient who responded on the first in human stu uh, uh, clinical trial with Yearboy. So it's taken a long time from the start of development into getting a, a license. It's also biological, it's an antibody that's it's not a chemical entity, it's something made by cells and release. So it's a very, it's, it's expensive to produce. That's probably one of the most expensive drugs that, uh, that are available in oncology and it's a real problem to be able to get coverage for it. Um, the, um, once it's FDA approved, the insurance carrier should, uh, should cover, but just a percentage of copay from patients uh, makes it limiting because of, it costs several thousand dollars. Um, there's programs to help patients that have been set up by foundations and also by the company that markets uh, uh, Yearboy uh, to be able to enroll and help uh, offset those costs. Um, Zelbaraf, the BRAF inhibitor, is a pill. It's taken a lot less time to develop because it gave these very high response rates that were reproducible and it's been priced in a, in, in a way that's more manageable, but still they're two very expensive drugs. So for the last, I, uh, for all the history of oncology, we had not had any drug that had uh, improved the survival of patients with metastatic melanoma. In the last year, there's been two new drugs approved uh, based on improvement in survival. One of them is bemorafenib or zelboraf, the BRAF inhibitor, and the other one is an immune stimulator called ipilimumab with the commercial name of Yearboy. They are very different types of drugs. One blocks a specific mutation that's in a subset of melanoma and it gives response rates reproducibly in the majority of patients, which is uh, the BRAF inhibitor zelboraf, and the other one, the immune stimulator Yearboy, uh, has a low response rate, around 10 to 15 percent of the cases, but those tend to be very durable responses. So now we're faced with an, a new situation in, uh, uh, in the clinic, which is we have two very different uh, drugs approved uh, for the first time. It's like waiting for a, for a bus for years and all of the sudden two of them come and they're both very different. One gives high response rates, but don't tend to be durable, the BRAF inhibitor. The other one gives low response rates that tend to be durable, the acetyl 4 blocking antibody Yearboy. So we go through a lot of discussion with new patients that come to the clinic uh, 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 with a metastatic melanoma and have a BRAF mutation, which is 50% of the cases. And it's uh, difficult to give guidance in the absence of data that compares both drugs. So we're uh, planning studies where we'll actually do this. We'll be looking at what's, uh, uh, which kind of drug is best to start with, uh, but also we're going one step forward. We've been testing in the laboratory, how can we combine them? So the BRAF inhibitor blocks an oncogene in melanoma, but it doesn't do uh, any detrimental effects in lymphocytes and actually we published uh, on this last year. And now we're starting to see that at certain, at certain concentrations, it may actually improve the function of lymphocytes with the same paradoxical MAP kinase uh, activation mechanism as the squamous cells that we, that we described in this uh, journal from, uh, this manuscript from last week. So there's all of the data to suggest that we can 
combine them and maybe get better outcomes. The BRAF inhibitor will continue to have the high response rate and the CTRF4 blocking antibody, the immune stimulator year boy, may make the responses more durable. And we have started such a clinical trial and we've entered two patients on the first in human phase one trial which just started last month.